This video is also available in Arabic, French, German, and Spanish. The links are in the description below. Life in most parts around the world is almost back to pre-COVID normal. People are ditching masks, attending large gatherings with no COVID restrictions, and calling the pandemic over. Whether this is your stance or not, we know that at least some of the manifestations of COVID will continue to be with us a lot longer than most of us like to think. Long COVID, a chronic condition that remains for weeks or months after the initial SARS-CoV-2 infection is cleared, is now well recognized by scientists and physicians as part of the COVID symptom profile. So how is long COVID defined? There is debate on the exact definition of long COVID, depending on how long the symptoms persist. Even the name long COVID is debatable. It is also known as post-COVID-19 condition, post-COVID-19 syndrome, post-acute sequelae of COVID-19, and chronic COVID-19 syndrome. Those with the condition are dubbed long haulers. However, what everyone agrees on is that long COVID is an array of long-term symptoms that might be experienced weeks to months after an infection with SARS-CoV-2 has been cleared. In many parts of the world, however, people with long COVID continue to fight for recognition of their condition. Because many people made a full recovery from COVID-19, a common theme with many long haulers since March 2020 is that they are disbelieved and even gaslighted. The symptoms of many long haulers are dismissed as psychosomatic, or they are told that it is all in their heads and that it is because they're anxious, which is not uncommon with newly recognized conditions. So what are the symptoms of long COVID? Symptoms reported include fatigue, headaches, respiratory symptoms such as shortness of breath, gastrointestinal symptoms, neurological and cognitive symptoms such as brain fog, cardiac issues, skin problems, and mental health issues. Other symptoms are being added to the list as we learn more about the condition. Many conventional lab tests come back normal, which adds to the complexity of both the understanding and treatment of the condition. Organ damage can lead to complications such as long-term breathing problems, heart complications, blood clots, stroke, chronic kidney impairment, and Guillain-Barré syndrome, a condition that results in temporary paralysis. It is important to know that long COVID can be a disability. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, long COVID can be a disability if it substantially limits one or more major life activities. This is because some people with long COVID experience physical or mental impairment, such as damage to the lungs, heart, kidney, or the nervous or circulatory systems. Some also experience lingering mental health conditions. This means that some people with long COVID are entitled to the same rights as other people with disabilities under the Americans with Disabilities Act. Long COVID can lead to death. A recent review by the National Center for Health Statistics, a division within the CDC, indicated that long COVID and the resulting health complications can lead to death. So who is at risk? Is it people who had severe COVID when they got infected, or maybe older people with underlying medical conditions? The answer is no. People who had a confirmed or suspected SARS-CoV-2 infection are at risk of developing lingering symptoms. This includes people who had severe COVID, mild COVID, or even an asymptomatic infection. As huge COVID waves hit schools, many of the long COVID sufferers are children. One analysis revealed that 75% of Americans diagnosed with long COVID had not been sick enough to be hospitalized when they initially got infected. One long COVID patient, Charlie McCone, wrote in The Guardian, Before my quote-unquote mild infection, I was a healthy, fit, 30-year-old, biking 10 miles a day with no prior health issues, the type of person the CDC says should bounce back after two weeks, well, it's been two years and I've yet to bounce back. I can't work or leave the house, and I rely on my partner as a full-time caretaker. I still can't breathe right. It is a living nightmare. Writing this piece would have taken me an evening before I was sick, but now this level of cognitive exertion takes an entire week to complete. Many of the long haulers have the same story. They are young, previously healthy, had a mild case of COVID, and now have debilitating illness. Are vaccines effective against long COVID? There is growing evidence that the risk of long COVID is reduced in people who have been vaccinated. 
an analysis by the UK Health Security Agency of 15 studies that looked at the effectiveness of vaccination against long COVID concluded that there is evidence that vaccinated people are less likely to report long COVID symptoms in the short, medium, and long term after infection. There is evidence that if vaccinated people get infected, they have less virus in their body, so it would make sense for them to have less virus-related complications. If you have experienced or are experiencing long COVID and are comfortable sharing your symptoms, let us know your experience in the comments below. How many people are affected by long COVID? The number of people affected varies depending on the definition used to identify the cases. It also varies with the population and the time period under study. The percentage of people affected is in the wide range of 10 to 30 percent of people who contracted the virus. A large study by the CDC has concluded that one in five adult COVID survivors under the age of 65 in the U.S. has at least one health condition that can be considered long COVID. For people over the age of 65, the number is one in four. According to the U.S. Government Accountability Office, long COVID may currently already affect between 7.7 .7 million and 23 million Americans, which is up to 7% of the U.S. population. According to the U.K. Office for National Statistics, the number of people experiencing self-reported long COVID is 1.7 million as of March 2022. That is 2.7% of the U.K. population. Of these, 1.1 million had symptoms severe enough to adversely affect their day-to-day -day activities. Now let's do the math for the next few years. Long COVID affects about 10 to 30 percent of people infected. Let's use the conservative estimate of 10 percent. Vaccines at best will reduce this number by 50 percent. That is, 5 percent of people who get infected will develop long COVID, assuming everyone gets vaccinated tomorrow morning. 5% of the world's population is 400 million people. If we relax all measures and allow everyone to get infected, 400 million people worldwide will be long haulers, assuming everyone is vaccinated. 5% over the next few years means 1 in 20 will get long COVID. Now let's compare that risk with the blood clotting syndrome reported with the Johnson & Johnson and Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines that led to restriction of their use in women younger than 50 years of age. That is 1 in 300,000 and 1 in 200,000 chance of blood clotting and a 1 in 2 million chance of death. 1 in 20 is not a risk to be dismissed. Are there any other viruses that cause post-viral syndromes? SARS-CoV-2 joins the list of pathogens that are known to cause post-acute infection syndrome, such as Ebola, dengue, polio, chikungunya, Epstein-Barr virus, and others. People who get infected with human papillomavirus are at greater risk of developing cancer. Virtually all cervical cancers are caused by HPV, and cervical cancer can develop years after the initial infection. Similarly, infection with Epstein-Barr virus increases the risk of developing multiple sclerosis later in life. So how do you avoid long COVID? Don't get the virus. Wear a protective mask, use proper ventilation, run HEPA filters, avoid large gatherings, get vaccinated if you haven't already done so. Even if you already got infected, try to avoid reinfection because it can increase your risk of developing long COVID. Don't get COVID, don't help spread COVID. References are linked in the description below. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and share it with your friends. And please support me by subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay safe.